uh, those soldiers or airmen or marines or uh, sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf uh, and yet feel constrained, even now that don't ask, don't tell is gone because uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that uh, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get it. Dr. Joe University Breakfast, Chairman of the San Diego GLBT Historic Task Force and a Latino and gay activist for more than 40 years, San Diego City Commissioner Nicole Murray Ramirez. Good morning, San Diego, buenos dias, and thank you all, especially the San Diego City Council, as we became this week the first in the nation to dedicate a street in honor of Harvey Milk. Yes, Navy Lieutenant Harvey Milk proudly served our nation while stationed in San Diego until 1955. And today, this Memorial Day weekend, let us especially proudly acknowledge our active duty military personnel and veterans and ask them to please stand so we can acknowledge and thank them for their service to our great nation. Especially acknowledge Private first class, 20-year-old Iris Guerrero, who just returned from duty in Afghanistan on the front lines for seven months, and congratulate him and Navy veteran Corey Houston on their recent engagement upon Guerrero's arrival at Cap Pendleton. Stand up, Iris and Corey. We thank you for your service. San Diego, you have so much to be proud of when it comes to the legacy of our very own Lieutenant Harvey Milk. In a national campaign launched right here in San Diego, we have officially received official communication from the United States Postal Department that Harvey Milk is being indeed considered for a U.S. postage stamp. This month, the GLBT Historic Task Force of San Diego County has launched a national campaign with the support of the ranking member of the Congressional Veterans Committee to get the Secretary of the Navy to name a ship in honor of Harvey Milk. And this week, and this week, the San Diego Historic Task Force and Congressman Bob Filner received official communication from the Secretary of Defense, Panetta, and the Secretary of the Navy, Ray Moss, that Harvey Milk will receive all due considerations when it comes to the recommendations for a naval vessel to be named in the honor of Lieutenant Harvey Milk. As a person, as a person of color and a gay man, I am especially proud of the legacy of Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, Cesar Chavez, and Harvey Milk. All of them having brought their service and civil rights messages to our city, our great city, in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. And yes, while times are changing, and even with the recent announcement of support of marriage equality by our president, our struggle, our fight, for the equality and social justice for all continues on. I recently returned from Rome with Stuart Milk of the Harvey Milk Foundation, where we met with various European government officials and GLBT leaders and students. And Scott, a young gay man, was tied to a street pole near a gay bar and a swastika put on his head and burned to death. And Humphrey, over 10,000 neo-Nazis confronted Stuart Mill and this country's gay pride parade marchers and threatened them with death, which resulted in a suicide. 
And as a Catholic myself, I'm broken to tell you that the recent denunciation by the Pope that gay marriage was the result and the end of society brought forth 16, 16 young gay suicides in one day in the country of Italy. The rise of votes and popularity of extreme right-wing parties are growing all over the world. I thank God for the global activism of Stuart Mill against oppression and discrimination put upon any community and peoples of our world. And now, in 2012, America faces the most important election of our time. Just recently, a pastor of a church called for electric fences to be built to lock up gays and lesbians with the hope that our community would die off. Another Christian pastor called upon parents to beat upon their feminine sons and masculine daughters, yes, to beat the homosexuality out of the children. Anti-sentimism, anti-immigration, and growing incidents of racism are on the rise in America, with even our own president and his family not immune. Yes, history is repeating itself, as bad economic times are bringing forth scapegoats and wedge issues. Indeed, these are growing serious times, my brothers and sisters. The San Diego LGBT Community Center, the longtime chairman of the San Diego LGBT Community Leadership Council, the current chair of the San Diego County Regional Airport Authority, and the co-chair of the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast Planning Committee, San Diego City Commissioner Robert Gleason. Happy Harvey Milk Day. This morning, as we gather in Harvey's name to celebrate the successes of the past year and always look towards the successes that we have yet to realize, it's impossible not to know um, that this is an important election year. We have a number of candidates, leading candidates for mayor. They don't always agree on everything, but in San Diego, we can say that for the first time in history, each of these major candidates is on record in support of LGBT equality, specifically including marriage equality, and today it's important to mark that history-making event by inviting them on stage. So if I can invite to the stage, please, District Attorney Bonnie Jimenez, Councilmember Carl DeMaio, Congressman Bob Filner, and Assemblymember Nathan Fletcher. That's, yes, that's it, thank you very much. <laughs> the current Vice Chairman of the Human Relations Commission for the City of San Diego, Mark Dillon, to recognize the Youth Leadership Award winners from Patrick Henry High School, Haley Adams and Rebecca Arellano. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Dillon. I am the Vice Chair of the Human Relations Commission. I am not now an office holder, nor am I running for anything. Thank you for entertaining me. The San Diego Human Relations Commission has been part of this event for ever since it began four years ago. And we'd like to thank Nicole Murray Ramirez for bringing us into this event so early. It's been one of our keystone activities. Uh, Harvey Milk's message of inclusion, respect, and equal treatment uh, for all is the essence of, of the Commission's work. I lived in the Castro when Harvey opened his camera store a few blocks away and was still in SF when we all got a kick in the gut with the assassination of Harvey and Mayor Moscone. As such, I feel privileged to be here an honor to be a part of this gathering that brings together the community in honor of a great civil rights leader, and particularly to mark some of the improvements that have occurred in the last 35 years. The payoff for Harvey's courage, leadership, and martyrdom is seen as the next generation moves well beyond where he planted the flag. How wonderful it is to have one of the first lesbian couples in the country, Haley Adams and Rebecca, Rebecca Ariano, named homecoming king and queen here in San Diego. But recognizing, but recognizing their courage is not complete without celebrating their families, friends, classmates, and the administrators of Patrick Henry High School who stood with them. Now that's real progress. So despite the challenges that we have heard so much about and continue to read about in the newspaper, 
We should not be discouraged by the troglodytes, mostly of my generation for some reason, being dragged kicking and screaming into the future. We can relax a little, really. The kids are all right. Patrick Henry High School voted Rebecca Ariano and Haley Adams their homecoming king and queen, sparking an outpouring of reaction nationwide. Rebecca tells Fox 5 she has never expected so much attention, receiving Facebook friend requests from total strangers and messages from people inspired by the young Keith Kumpel couple. But there are also strong reactions from some who feel the title should be reserved for a boy and a girl. The two now become the first ever same-sex couple to win that award. Ladies and gentlemen, please now welcome to the stage the Secretary Treasurer of the San Diego and Imperial County Slaver Council, Loretta Gonzalez. I'm on a strict orders to stay on script, but I did want to note that I happen to have a seat with the sexiest man in San Diego, right over here, the police chief. <laughs> I just wanted to scare my staff about what might come out of my mouth. <laughs> It's my pleasure to be here again this year to honor the long collaboration between labor movement, working families, and the ongoing fight for dignity and equality for all San Diegans. And it's my honor today to present the Youth Essay Award to Andrew Alvarado. Andrew will read his essay for us today. It's also printed in your program book. I think you'll agree that it captures the vision and spirit of Harvey Milk. Andrew? Hope is the belief in a positive outcome related to the events and circumstances in one's life. That is the sterile, unemotional definition of hope. But to me, hope is much more. Hope is the force that wakes us up in the morning. It is the force that propels us to do great things. It reassures us in our darkest time. In a twist of the old idiom, where there is hope, there is life. And Harvey Milk understood that. He understood that hope is a driving force in the world. He saw within us the power to hope for a better world, hope for a better tomorrow, hope for a better place to come if the pressures at home are too great, hope that it will all be all right. And to me, the us's Harvey Milk spoke of are just the people. It's the people who have had to endure any form of social, injust social injustice. It's every man, woman, and child who's a part of the universal spirit that animates, motivates, and is the unifying principle of all living things. Sure, that definition of hope is a bit transcendental, but ideas are just that. Emotions and feelings such as hope and compassion transcend physical barriers like race and orientation and ability and connect each person to the next. To me, it's everyone. Harvey meant that there aren't any gays or blacks or Asians or disabled, but merely us. In other words, it is we, and we are here, and we are proud, and we are strong. As a species, we are together and united. Harry Milk had hope that mankind would come to understand that just as he had, and only recently have us begin to realize that. He, like John Steinbeck, gave his audience hope by stressing that whenever there's a cop beating up a guy, hope will be there. Hope will be there in the way guys yell when they're mad, and the way kids laugh when they're hungry, and they know supper's ready. Harvey, Mil Harvey Milk's dream is still out there, waiting to be picked up by us. It's out there, growing and fermenting in the souls of people who are fed up with injustice, people like me. I have hope. However, the despondent people of the world view me as doe-eyed and ignorant of the harsh realities of the real world. They misinterpret my hope as false hope, and they misconstrue my sincere optimism as naivete. I respond to this as such. Hope does not cloud my judgment. I know the world is not a utopia, and I have no Pollyanna. Indeed, the best way to spread hope is to lead by example. I aim to live my life in hopefulness, and by doing so, starting a coalition that consists of a rare group of people, the few which that can keep their heads up for so long. Like Mr. Milk, we won't give up until everyone knows what equality is, ever. So Andrew also gets a check, but 
but before we give it to him, I just want to make sure that you're not going to give this to the mayoral candidate. <laughs> and it's not my responsibility if he does. So here to present the check and award are the Emperor and Empress of the Imperial Court of San Diego, Emperor Tom Dickerson, the Obsidian Double Dragon Emperor 40, and Empress the Rudy em the Ruby Empress Ajax. Please help me welcome to the stage. Now if you'll all please join us as we recognize a gracious and inspirational gift from the Milk Foundation, from the Imperial Court de San Diego, and from the LGBT Community Center represented by co-chairs Dr. Sean Travers and Dale Kelly Bankhead. This is the first gift of books about the life of Harvey Milk. They're intended for libraries and classrooms in the San Diego Unified School District. And here to accept uh, the award is school trustee mem uh, board member Kevin Beiser. My, how times have changed for LGBT students in the San Diego Unified School District. I have to thank the trailblazers that made me think it was possible to join the Board of Education as the first openly elected gay member. Thank you, Senator Chris Kehoe. Thank you, Assemblymember Tony Atkins. And yes, thank you. Councilmember Todd Gloria and Carl DeMaio. All of them let me know that it is possible to get involved and try to affect change in education. And that is one of the reasons why I am very humbled to present to you today the first ever Harvey Milk Day proclamation in the San Diego Unified School District. With the help of the Royal, Imperial Royal Court's donation of these wonderful books, now our children will learn about another civil rights leader in our schools. <laughs> this book, it is amazing. I had no idea Harvey Milk was a football player. I love football at the Chargers. <laughs> and I know that our children will learn more about this wonderful man and his contributions for equality for all. Thank you very much. It is now our great honor to present to you one of San Diego's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender communities, greatest allies and heroes. A man whose politics, whose courage, and whose capacity to do the right thing has made him a San Diego legend. When the history of our city is written, the name of Jerry Sanders will stand proudly among our finest and noblest citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the video monitor for a brief clip of one of the moments that has made him such a hero to so many of us. Uh, some of you may know that I didn't always support the right to marry, uh, but like many people, my position has evolved. Several years ago, I believed that civil unions uh, were fair. The irony is, I held this mistaken view, even though my oldest daughter, Lisa, is a lesbian. But I was wrong. Fairness means people giving people the same rights and freedoms as everybody else. There's no such thing as fair enough. It's either fair or it's not. Today, marriage equality is not something that I just support. It's something that I promote every single day. As I've said, I hope that everyone will find someone they love deeply, someone with who they can share their life's experiences and grow old together. I cannot look anyone in the face and tell them that their relationship is any less meaningful than my marriage to my wife. Seems that each year more and more Americans are going through the same evolution that I did. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. When I announced my support for gay marriage a few years ago, uh, at the start of my mayoral campaign for the second term, I was expecting a lot of angry phone calls, but very few came. Instead, I heard from so many people, from gay and lesbian couples, from their families and friends, uh, and fair-minded San Diegans who simply said thank you. We must continue our pursuit of marriage equality until everyone has that legal right to marry the one that they love. The creation of this coalition will send a very strong message to every corner of this country that we, may, we mayors representing cities large and small are deeply committed to this cause. Everyone deserves this right. Everyone. 
So we hope that every city will embrace marriage equality as the mayor of San Diego is proud to say that San Diego does. Very few people have the opportunity to present their parents with an award. My father has always been a personal hero of mine. He's taught me about equality, about acceptance, and even about the use of profanity at the right moment. <laughs> growth of a politician and a father, who stood up for what he believes is right. He stood up for all those who haven't been able to stand up for themselves. He stood up even though it wasn't to his political advantage. He stood up even if it was incredibly difficult. He stood up to do what was right, to say that the LGBT people deserve the same opportunities, the same dignity, and the same respect, and the same rights as all Americans. Please welcome to my, to the people that are in here, <laughs> my family and my father. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I was just thinking as I was uh, watching this crowd and as I was looking at people, uh, it has been an absolute honor for me uh, to work with my family who have taught me a lot, but also the courage in this crowd for everybody who has come out, uh, for everybody who has stood up for somebody else. That's what the leadership is really about. And it's not about an individual like me. It's about each of you individually, when you had to come out or when you chose to come out. And that took a tremendous amount of courage. And that's what's really changing the landscape in America. Because all of a sudden, all of us now know that we have a son or a daughter or a family member, or we have a friend or a coworker, or we have somebody else that uh, we think is very important and they have come out and we realize they have the same hopes and dreams and desires that all of us do. And so I just want to applaud all of you for the courage and I'd like to applaud my family uh, for the courage that they've had. So thank you very much. In 1993, she became San Diego's first openly LGBT elected official. Since then, she's risen in elected offices and served our San Diego community continuously and with great distinction for 19 years as our own Harvey Milk, State Senator Christine Keener. And speaking of the old days, way back before there was GPS or Google Maps, people had to navigate using the night sky. One of the key elements in the heavens was those sailors and explorers, what was called the Lode Star, a prominent star that leads the way, like the North Star. Some of the older lesbians in the room might recall Chris Williamson's Lode Star. Chris Kehoe is our Lode Star. When Chris was elected to the City Council in 1993, she was the first open LGBT person elected to office in San Diego. There was no state-sanctioned domestic partnerships, and the Human Dignity Ordinance was just three years old. Thanks to Chris's trailblazing, today all of the candidates for mayor support marriage equality, and two of them are members of the LGBT community. Discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity is illegal, and the state LGBT caucus, of which Senator Kehoe was the very first chair, now has eight members, including our own speaker, John Perez. To have come so far required a tremendous amount of work, often resting on the shoulders of just a few. I want to take just a moment to highlight some of Senator Kehoe's accomplishments. Chris served eight years on the city council, during which time I was honored to be a member of her staff. She was elected to the State Assembly in 2000 and served as Speaker Pro Tempore in 2003 and 2004, the second woman ever and the first woman from San Diego to hold this position. It's the second highest ranking position in the Assembly. Chris was elected to the State Senate in 2004 and re-elected in 2008, and I'm sure she would continue to be re-elected forever if not for term limits. In the Senate, Chris is highly regarded as an environmental leader and a dedicated good government advocate. She chairs the Senate Appropriations Committee, another, another extraordinarily influential position. 
and she's a member of the Banking and Finance Institutions, Energy, Utilities, and Commerce, Environmental Equality, Governance and Finance, Natural Resources and Water, Transportation and Housing, as well as the Joint Committees on Emergency Management, which she chairs, the Arts, Fisheries, and the Aquaculture, Rules and Legislative Budget. I'm not sure what the Senate is going to do without Chris. People talk about the importance of having a place at the table, but obviously, in Chris's case, Senator Kehoe has gone far beyond that to sitting at the head of the table. And while she was distinguishing herself in a variety of very complex public policy arenas, she was also moving California forward towards full LGBT equality. She authored an equal benefits ordinance for state contractors. She carried legislation to make the property tax code treat domestic partners like married spouses. She worked with the insurance commissioner in Equality California to pass the California Insurance Equality Act. She authored resolutions adopted by the state legislature urging Congress to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell and to adopt the Matthew Shepard Hates Crimes Prevention Act. She led a successful effort to eliminate discrimination based on sexual orientation in the California National Guard. And if that weren't enough to keep her busy night and day, she's really also found time over the years to continue to be my own personal lodestar and my mentor. As I mentioned, when Chris was on the city council, she asked me to join her staff. It was there that I learned a couple of things. Chris helped me to understand whether a staff are elected, what an honor it is to serve, and how important it is to respect communities and constituents. They are the reason we are there. There is no such thing as a no-brainer issue. Every issue has multiple paths to consider, and it always matters to someone. She helped me to learn early on to work smarter, not harder, critically important when you work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And together we learned, Chris Kehoe, Bonnie Dumanis, and I, that we would take less flack from Nicole Murray Ramirez if we stopped wearing scarves. <laughs> personally so very grateful to have had the opportunity to follow Chris's lead. We really all owe her a huge debt of gratitude for giving so much of herself for us over the years. I also want to do one, one last thing. I want to acknowledge Chris Kehoe's life partner, Julie Warren. Personal commitment to supporting Chris over the years. It is really way harder on the spouses than many people will ever realize. So Julie, we thank you. And now, if all of you will please join me in letting Chris Kehoe know how much we appreciate her many years of service as our Lone Star. We wouldn't be here where we are today without her. San Diego's own Harvey Milk, Senator Christine Kehoe. What can I say, Tony? Thank you so much for that kind, kind, and generous introduction. And Robert and Nicole, thank you for your expert hosting ability this morning. I have to tell you, leaving uh, the California State Senate this November, after almost 20 years in public office, certainly does have me thinking uh, about uh, memory lane. And uh, as I looked at the slideshow, I got those feelings all over again. And I remember so well being brand new to San Diego back in 1978. And I started uh, at the Women's Center working with feminist and lesbian rights adv advocates uh, to try, even then, to move things forward. Uh, soon the community was engulfed by the AIDS epidemic. I was at the San Diego Gay Set, and many of you remember that great weekly newspaper. The challenges of AIDS galvanized our community, forcing us to organize politically, learning how to raise funds and build alliances. We worked with partners to fight for our civil rights then and for the passage of district elections. And thanks to strategic thinkers at the San Diego Democratic Club, such as Charlie McCain, who successfully led, yes, Charlie deserves a prize. Those strategic thinkers successfully linked with other progressive and ethnic communities uh, to to map out a way to get a gay-friendly seat that paved the way for everything that has come since. A fight that we won. And then San Diego's strong military ties made us in many ways ground zero for Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Another battle in which we thankfully prevailed. 
At the same time, the battle for marriage equality ignited the entire community, embracing gender and economic and ethnic identities. And that's a battle we will win, too. Through it all, we have strengthened our partnerships with progressive San Diegans whose values we share. Uh, so we want to uh, thank, I want to acknowledge all the work we've done over the years with organized labor, with the pro-choice community, with environmentalists, communities of color, all those who fight for economic justice and civil liberties, and so many more for standing with us. We have come so far, it has been a stunning, stunning success, one after another in many ways, but we have a long way to go. Our youth need more guidance and services than we can provide. Our community is still challenged by uh, drug and alcohol abuse. The daily transmission of AIDS is still with us despite years of education, and we need a cure. So we still, still have much work to do. Making our city and state a better place for all people, it is a process, it is a journey we walk every day. It's been truly my privilege to serve San Diego, and I know no greater thanks than to my constituents, especially the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community here in San Diego. It has been an amazing ride, and I thank you so much.